Hey guys, how you doing? This is Jason Ramos with Good Vibes Real Estate Solutions. Welcome to another episode of Chat with Chatter. Welcome guys, how you doing? Uh, today we have a special guest, the gentleman uh, by the name of Mr. Hall. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, what's up guys? Um, yeah, my name is Marquise. Um, I'm 20 years old and I'm from Ohio. And um, we just recently closed our first real estate deal on um, April the 20th actually. So about, uh, about a week ago. Oh, wow, man. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, cool. How long did it take you to get that deal? Um, to be honest with you, I started learning real estate um, at the beginning of January of 2018. So pretty much January 1st is when we started learning about it. Um, I found you guys on YouTube and I don't, I don't even understand where we would be without, you know, your YouTube channel. Um, cool. Because man, there's just so much free content on there. And that's, that's kind of where I got started with wholesaling, just um, learning on YouTube started um, beginning of this year. Cool, man. So t tell us a little bit about that first deal. Like what, what did it entail? Yeah. Um, so it, it's kind of crazy how everything got situated. Um, I want to say now, this is a disclaimer. I'm not telling everyone to get up and quit your job. Um, you know, I was, I was completely sick of my nine to five job. I couldn't stand it. I was working there for about a year. Um, and you know, I just, I just needed another way out. So I started diving deep onto YouTube beginning of January. Um, I get my bandit signs and let's see, March the 30th, sometime around there. So, um, I get my bandit signs around March 30th. I tell my job, I'm pretty much done with you guys. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> and um, I pretty much put in my two weeks, you know? So I put in my two week notice without even having any marketing. Um, I knew my bandit signs were coming in fairly shortly and I ordered around 300 of them. Wow. Just, so, just so I knew I would, I would get a deal. So um, I, put a, I, I took massive action, a huge leap of faith. I bought those 300 bandit signs. And then I also bought a, um, a high equity absentee owner list from list source. Okay. So um, I just really wanted to make sure if we're quitting this nine to five job, it was pretty stable. Um, I just wanted to make sure I'd get my first deal done. So I got the band of signs. I got the list. Um, I got the list from listsource.com and then I skip traced it on rei skip.com. Mm -hmm. So I got around, I wanted to skip trace 500, but only got around 250 numbers. So um, we're getting to the beginning of April. I don't have a job. You know, um, I got, I'm putting out bandit signs and I'm starting cold calling. So, okay. um, you know, I got some pretty good advice. You know, if you're starting cold calling, start over on Craigslist is where you kind of want to get familiar. Um, so I just started calling for rent on Craigslist. And um, a lot of people were kind of saying Craigslist isn't very motivated. Sometimes you're not going to find that many motivated sellers on Craigslist. But I was just starting out. I just wanted to get my, you know, my phone call experience a little bit better. Um, previously I was working at a customer service, um, place. So, you know, my communication skills, I kind of learned it from them. You know, my boss would hand me scripts. I would have to memorize the scripts. So it was kind of weird going from talking on the phone all day to talking on the phone all day again, <laughs> um, in real estate. So, um, yeah, we, um, we started getting on the phone on Craigslist and this is how we got our first deal. It was actually on Craigslist. Um, it was on a, it was a for rent. Um, okay. I pretty much, I, I pretty much just called the four rents. It was about 20 of them. I pretty much called them. Now I want you guys to let you know, my name is Marquise, but when I was working in customer service, a lot of people couldn't really pronounce my name that good. They would always call me Mark, Marquis, right. anything but my name. So I was like, if we're going to transition, um, I'll just let everyone know off the rip. My name is Marcus. So I was calling everyone. Hello. My name is Marcus. I'm a local real estate investor. I buy three to five properties. Um, and I was just going down the list. So I get to this one landlord, I ask her, um, you know, I understand you have a property for rent. However, are you looking for any you'd like to sell? Um, and then immediately I just wait and she's like, oh, you know what? I have these two duplexes. You know, me and my husband hate them so much. We can't stand them anymore. You know, he's getting old. And I was just like, wow, I need to get on this. They seem pretty motivated, you know, right now. So um, I don't have the nine to five job anymore. I schedule the appointment for the next day immediately. Yep. Um, and the wife, she works on the business end and the husband, he works on the fix and flip setting up the appointments. Right. So I talked to the wife on the phone. I said, can I please look at this property as soon as possible tomorrow? And she says, yeah, no problem. Meet my, um, can you meet my husband out there? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's where we're getting started into, um, the process where we, we immediately set the appointment the next day. 
if I had this nine to five job, I'm not sure if I would have locked this down this quick um, because you know what, I would have to be working. I couldn't set the schedule. So we took the leap of faith. We set the schedule the next day. Um, now a little warning, I got in a car accident last year and it kind of ruined like the front end. So um, the front end of my car um, is like blue now and like the rest of the car is silver, car is silver. So I was like, a couple people say your car doesn't matter, but you know what, my, I don't, I don't want to pull up in my 2005 Mazda with the blue hood on it. So um, I called my mom, she was around 15 minutes away from me and she's a registered nurse. She, she's, she has a prized possession of Mercedes Benz. So <laughs> I was like, mom, can I please use your car tomorrow? Um, I actually didn't even tell her I quit my job, to be honest with you. Um, I don't live with my mom. I didn't want her to know anything. So um, I immediately tell her, you know, can I borrow your car? I have an appointment I would like to go on. She was like, yeah, just put gas in it. So I was like, fine. Um, we get to the appointment the next day. Um, you know, we pull up in the Mercedes Benz. The, the, uh, the landlord is already there sitting outside of his car. And I'm not sure if it was because the way I presented myself in, in a professional matter or it's because it was Mercedes Benz, but right when I stepped outside the car, we were going into the, uh, to the, uh, to the duplex and he pretty much asked me, um, oh, hey, um, you know, since you fix so many houses a month, you know, these, these certain key locks, do you use these key locks on your properties that you fix? And I'm just thinking like, I'm not even sure what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, yeah, yeah, I use these key locks also. They're real easy to, um, real easy to change out. So right off the rip, I think he, you know, felt confident to me that maybe I was a serious buyer. Um, but over the phone, his wife set a number around 30,000 for this property. Um, so over the phone, she's already thinking about 30,000. You know, I asked her, what is the lowest cash offer you would accept if we can pay all closing costs, close in the next 10 days? She said, I believe we could do 30,000 for the property. Talk to my husband. So I get to the property. I'm very nervous. I'm like, I don't even, I don't even understand what repairs I'm looking for. What do I speak to this guy about? This is my first appointment. Right. But I kind of learned, you know, you don't need to really need to know any of that stuff. You know, just build really, really good rapport and you'll be good. So um, I walk into the apartment, um, to the duplex. And to be honest with you, I didn't even really walk around the place. I didn't say, oh, how's the paint? How's the windows? Things like that. I just sat in his living room, building really good rapport, trying to figure out why he wants to sell. And I got to the bottom line of it. And he pretty much said, you know, he's working Monday through Friday on the weekends. He's babysitting his kids. So he can't even fix the property up. And that's when I said, you know what? You know, you don't have to do any repairs left. We'll, we'll come in here. We'll fix everything as is conditioned. And he was just like, wow, you would really do that for me? Um, and then I was like, yeah, it definitely looks like there's some repairs to this house. What is the lowest offer you would accept? Um, his wife already said 30,000 and he said 30,000 again. And I was like, you know what? Um, I think the best that we can do is 25,000 for this property. Um, I was just, I was like the foundation's just not looking right to me. Things just aren't looking too good. So he says, you know what, you know what, Marcus, I think I could do 25,000 call my wife tomorrow morning. So I'm like, okay, perfect. Um, you know, we just built really good rapport. I was there for around 30 minutes or so, not talking about the house or anything, strictly building really good rapport with this guy. Um, so then we leave, um, you know, I called the wife the next morning and, um, I say, I walked over to the apartment with your husband. Um, it looks like the repairs are just a little bit more than we were expecting. Um, is there any way that you can, um, what, what's the lowest offer you would, you would take? So I asked her for another lower offer. She says, um, you and my husband spoke about 25 is 25 the best that, um, 25 is around the lowest that we can do. And I says, you know what, is there any way you can do 23,000? And she sat there for a second <laughs> and she says, you know what, I can do 23. So I'm like, wow, you know, this is, this is going very smooth. Everything's good to go. Um, I send over the purchase and sales agreement to them. They send it back to me in the next, I want to say hour or two so they send this thing back quick and it's a simple one page purchase and sales agreement um pretty simple um i get it under contract for 23 and this is on a wednesday i believe it's on a wednesday or so and i had some advice for you you kind of want to push this out on the weekend you don't want to wait any longer just try to push it out see what you can do over the weekend so it's on a wednesday i call a few cash buyers see if anyone's interested and um i found my cash buyer this way um, I went on the county tax assessor website and I, the, the street name was Pitkin for this, for this property is Pitkin. So I just went on the county tax assessor website, typed in Pitkin Avenue 
Um, and then it pretty much brought all the owners, you know, on, on the street. So I just found the LLCs and I just started calling all, all the LLCs on that, on the block. <laughs> I get to this one LLC number and the guy answers and I was like, hello, I'm a local real estate investor and notice you own a lot of properties on this street. Are you interested in purchasing another one? And immediately he's just like, are you talking about the property with the messed up porch and the TV on it? And I was just like, wow, yeah, that, that's the exact property I'm talking about. And he's like, what the heck? How did you get that property? I've been trying to get this property for months now. And I just told him, we spend money on marketing each month. We get them at a deeply discounted price. Um, do you want to take a look at it? And he's like, yeah, I'm definitely interested. I own all the other duplexes. I, I, I'm definitely interested on in there. So he's the really the only serious one I talked to during that like day, two day time frame. I talked to some other people um, and I say, everyone come out on this inspection day on Friday at 3 p.m. Um, and I wanted everyone came out. So I blasted out probably like, I think six emails at one time. So they all knew they were all gonna show up at the same time. But I, I go up to the inspection date and only one person shows up and he's the guy who, who owns all these properties. So I'm like, okay, worst, worst case scenario, I have this property under contract for another like 25 days. Worst case scenario, we'll market it a little bit more if, you know, if he doesn't go through. So, so uh-huh. Just we want to stop you real quick on a question for you. So yeah. he knew that you were having an open house and, and you kind of set it up that there was going to be people there besides him? Yeah, I pretty much let him know uh, this Friday, there's actually going to be a couple more investors who are interested in this property. Um, they're all going to be coming out around 3 p.m. if you can stop by at that time. And he says, no problem at all. Um, I'll definitely be there. Cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he shows up. We're walking to the property. Once again, I'm not sure what to say to this guy. I'm, I'm, um, good thing he was, he was a general contractor and a landlord. So he already knew kind of, you know, repairs, things like that. So we're just walking through the property and we get to the point where he's like, where's your paperwork? I'm ready to sign right now. And I'm like, oh, wow, perfect. <laughs> I, have my, I have my contracts right here. So I, I take out, um, this is the number one mistake I made. Um, I took out another purchase and sales agreement because at the time, that's what I thought I needed. So I take out the purchase and sales agreement. He signs it like he already knows what's up. Um, now the earnest money, I told another thing I messed up was the earnest money. I told him only put $10 down, which I know not to do anymore. <laughs> so um, I say $10 earnest money um, and we can use your title company to close. He says, um, perfect. I've been using my title company for 15 years. So I'm thinking everything's good. Um, now he says 25,000 is what he can do. That's the best he can do. Um, and I didn't really, I didn't really want to, you know, say, no, I have other investors coming. I'm not taking your offer. I kind of just bit the bullet and took his 25. I said, no problem at all. We're looking to make 2000 right off the, you know, right off the rip right now. So that's fine. Um, so we get the contract signed with him. Ten dollars earnest money. I know it was a mistake. Um, we get everything signed, and then I actually called the seller the next day, saying, "Hey, there's some foundation issues. Um, our inspectors came in here. I'm sorry, but um, there's a, we're, we're going to need this contract for around twenty thousand." Um, and she says, "Oh, no problem at all, sweetie. We can do twenty thousand five hundred." So I'm like, "Wow, okay." So um, we changed the price from 23, we sent it over to 20,500 and I'm thinking everything's smooth, we're gonna make a quick $4,500, great. Um, anyways, I send, I'm trying to send all the paperwork over to a title company and they're saying everything is incorrect. Um, this is gonna be a double close, we can't do double closings, we're not sure what you're doing. I'm just like, huh, you know, what's going on? I got this far, there's no way guys that this deal's blowing up because paperwork. So I start calling some local wholesalers and they're just like, man, there's no problem. Just use this purchase contract with the buyer, send that over to him. We won't have any issues. I was like, okay, great. Um, so that's exactly what I did. I just sent him a purchase contract um, and he signed it. You know, he, it was over DocuSign. So he got that over to me in the next like hour or so. So everything's going good again. Um, you know, all the paperwork's at title company and we're, we're looking to close. So the title company gives me a call. Everything's good. Um, you know, we're ready to close. Can you tell everyone we're ready to go? And I was, I was ecstatic at that point. I was, I was ready to close this deal. Um, I called the buyer. I let him know everything's ready to go. He asked for the HUD settlement. And I'm just thinking, huh, um, you know, how do I even get a HUD settlement over to him? I don't even have the HUD settlement yet. Um, so the title company, um, it, it was kind of weird 
because the title company wasn't having any contact with the buyer or the seller, so they were getting kind of, you know, weirded out a little bit. Um, so I, I, I called the buyer myself to let him know what's going on. He asked for the house settlement um, because he never received it, so I sent it to him. And we're on the phone with each other when I sent to the HUD settlement and he's sitting there saying, everything on this HUD settlement is wrong. It's incorrect. Your prices are wrong. I'm not even sure what you're doing. So I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh, we're 24 hours away from closing and this deal's gonna blow up. He calls me back three hours later or an hour later and he's saying, I'm sorry, I was on my phone, my glasses, I didn't have my glasses on. I'm looking at the HUD on my cell phone. I'm sorry, everything's good. Let's go to closing. Nice. Finally get to closing, the closing date. Um, one mistake I made, I think, I didn't want everyone to show up at the same time, but it happened. The seller and the buyer showed up. He actually ended up passing out his business cards, which I, I knew that was gonna happen because they all showed up. Um, but the closing went great. Um, I introduced the seller and the buyer together. The seller didn't have any questions. Um, and then, you know, they cut that, they cut the check in like an hour or two. Um, the only thing where I messed up is I forgot to tell the buyer to pay closing costs. So I split closing costs with them. Um, so it should have been a $4,500 profit, but it turned out to be 3,900 and, and some change. Uh, okay. Yeah, man. And I want to say I got the, I got that second contract. Um, the one for 20,500, I got that under contract on April the 8th and then we closed on the 20th. So, I mean, everything just went so smooth. You know, we closed our first deal in literally under a month and we have another property under contract for the same people. So, um, nice. we got our, we got our first deal closed in under a month and yeah, I want to appreciate, you know, Chato, Jason, like the free content on wholesaling on that, on the YouTube channel was a mind blowing to me. I was like, wow, cool. these guys are taking their time out, putting some content out for us. And I just ate all the free content up and I just put massive imperfect action. You guys were literally just saying, you need to put the action out. We're giving you all, just put the action out. Did you do it yet? And I was like, man, I got to do it. <laughs> That's beautiful right there. That's exactly what it is. Absolutely. This is the ideal world, what you just said. You know, we put the information out there. Somebody actually takes the information we give them and they use it. They implement it, they use it, and they're successful with it. So that was going to be my next question to you. Like, what advice do you have to a brand new wholesaler mm -hmm. that's still on the fence and just dying to get started but don't even know where to begin? Right, man. Um, I think the biggest tip of advice where I would really want to let people know is like, on the weekends, I'm not out partying, you know, I'm not out doing any of that, any, anything else. A lot of, a lot of 20 year olds are doing right now. I would just suggest you on the weekends to stay in the house, grind, um, you know, learn about wholesaling, get all the information. Um, but once you have us all that information, stop watching the YouTube, stop watching the podcasts because you'll get an information overload, which was, I was getting, I was watching too much at one point. And then you guys just like put out the action because I kept telling myself, I need to watch another five YouTube videos nice. to get this wholesaling. And then it would be another five. And I was just like, done. So my biggest advice is watch the YouTube just for maybe a month or two. I'm telling you, with after you know you get on the information, put in massive, imperfect action. Even if you're nervous to get on the phones, you don't think you know what you're doing, that deal will come to you because you have the knowledge. You just have to put the action in. Man, you, you summed it up perfectly. That's exactly what we preach is knowledge plus action equals results. And that's the only way you're going to get the results. You got to implement what you learn. Yep. Cool, 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 cool. Very good. Did, I got a question for you. Does, uh -huh. your, does your mom know that you quit your job yet? Now, um, I told her, I told her I was like, yeah, we closed this first deal. Um, I told her I'm still working it. But I mean, eventually I'll tell her to quit after the second deal closes. I'm pretty sure I'm going to tell her, Hey mom, I quit my job. But like at the moment right now, I don't really live next to my mom. I don't want her to know what's going on. I don't want her to stress her mind out or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely let her know though. Cool. Hopefully she's not Googling chat with Chato. I know. I know. Right. I know. Right. Um, send that's the link, you know, By the way, <laughs> she's our next guest. <laughs> yeah. Give her the link and she'll know immediately. But, that's um, good, man. So, yeah, man, that's how we're going. We have another deal under contract. We're looking to close that one. Um, I didn't put this the, the previous deal on Craigslist. This one I have been. I've been marketing it out a lot better. So, um, you know, I had one cash buyer just to put this in here. He was pretty much, he was kind of disappointed. He was like, um, for this next property, I have another open house investor meeting. He pretty much said, I don't like bidding. I don't want to do any of that bidding. He says, I want you to send all your properties over to me first. And I was thinking in the back of my head, like, well, I'm not, sorry, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, so... Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah piece of advice all right so you did a great job you know you took the action you did what you have to do 
couple pieces of advice. Number mm -hmm. one, don't sell yourself short. All right. When you have a bunch of buyers that are potentially coming to ship mm -hmm. to see the property, don't accept anybody's offer until everybody sees it. Okay. Right. You're, gonna, you're, you're selling yourself short. Number one, if you don't meet your other buyers, you only have one buyer on your buyers list, not mm -hmm. even the five that were potentially going to come. Right. right. You didn't give them the opportunity to, you know, vet them out. You didn't give them the opportunity to make an offer. You could have got 30,000, 40,000. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'd rather, me personally, I'd rather have a buyer pay more money as opposed to taking money out of the seller's pocket. Right, right. You know, instead of going for a price reduction, I'd rather have the buyers come up higher because they, they're the ones with the money. Oh, yeah. So that's what I would recommend. You want to build your buyers list, especially your brand new. Yeah. Always, always, always shop it around to as many people as possible. And if that person wants to, you know, become your sole VIP buyer, mm -hmm. you have to pay for that. Right. You have to pay for that honor. He can't lowball you and only give you $2,000 spread because that doesn't work. So just keep Perfect. that in mind. So one of the things that I noticed about you, your confidence, all right? Mm -hmm. Confidence is crucial in this business. This is a game of sales, a game of relationships. So if you're not confident, they're going to see right through it and you're not going to get the deal. So mm -hmm. phenomenal job. Very, very happy to hear this. Guys, he's only 20 years old. 2-0. Okay? Fresh out of high school. <laughs> right. Uh, right, man. No college experience. Like I'm telling you guys, YouTube is, is, is the next college you guys just need to be sitting on. Just when you're going to work, watch YouTube, you know, off of work, on break. That's all I was doing. No more. No, no television. Tell live vision. Cut that out. Just watch wholesaling videos. You'll get to the point where, you know, you can watch some Netflix and chill, but like, we're just on the point right now where we're just grinding, grinding, grinding because it'll, it'll pay off in the end time. Oh, absolutely. Cool. Cool. That's great, man. So yeah, man. So, so one, the, one other question I want to have for you, because uh -huh. a lot of people out there might experience the same thing. What types of obstacles or emotions came up when you're dealing with this whole process? <laughs> <laughs> so many emotions, um, so many highs and lows because the deal came through for me so quick. Um, I kind of felt like, wow, this is gonna this is gonna be smooth sailing. And to be honest with you, I almost gave up hope. Like this this deal blew up almost like numerous times, and there were some times where I was like, wow, is it really worth it? Is it really worth going through this? But I'm telling you, it's definitely worth it. I didn't think um, I was going to be able to close it, but you just have to keep going through with your faith. You know what I mean? Um, because at, at sometimes I didn't think it was going to close, and if I would have gave up. I would, have, I would have never got the check. So just just keep going. Even if your gut instinct is like, I'm so nervous to get on the phone, that's great. You need to feel that nervousness. That means you're doing something right. So um, just straight, just jump on those phones and, and just get it done. That's perfect. It's so good to hear somebody else saying the exact same thing. <laughs> you know, we've been saying that forever, but coming from us, we do it all the time. But to hear somebody that just started and you're giving the exact same advice, it works. Ladies and gentlemen, this stuff works. Absolutely. So, Mr. Hall, Marquise, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. Yeah. Um, definitely been a pleasure. Great story. You know, we love hearing this. So, for you guys out there, you know, keep it coming. Keep watching. Keep commenting. And you could be our next guest here. Just keep going. That's yeah, it. man. Once again, thanks thanks a lot, Jason. Thanks a lot, Chato. Your, your, your guys' free content. Like, the duo you guys got was just like, wow. Like the information is, is, is just so good. So once again, thanks for having me on guys. And hopefully Great. a lot of people can eat up this free content too. Cool. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Right, no thanks. problem. And have a good one guys. You too. Take have care. Bye-bye.